The megalodon shark is the largest shark species to have ever lived on Earth. They were multiple times larger than great whites and would have been an epic sight to behold. Let's take a look at 15 megalodon shark facts that are incredible. Number 15, the largest predator ever. Blue whales are believed to be the biggest animals to ever live on the Earth, but they're fairly docile creatures that feed on plankton and other small particles that they filter from the water. When it comes to vicious predators, the megalodon was by far the largest that we know of, and it's frightening to think just how big they were in relation to the predators that are alive today. Megalodons are thought to have grown to a maximum length of 60 or 70 feet and could easily weigh in excess of 60 tons. This is about the same length as a sperm whale, but far heavier. And it's no wonder that megalodons were the apex predators of the oceans. To put this into context, the most feared sharks that are alive today, the Great White, grow to just 23 feet long and weigh three and a half tons, meaning megalodons were as much as three times longer and 20 times heavier. They're even dwarfed by the largest of the marine reptiles that were around during the times of the dinosaurs, but there remains a debate as to quite how giant they could become. Shark cartilage doesn't fossilize as well as bones from other animals, so the best researchers can do is estimate their size based on the teeth that have been found. Number 14, the teeth. Not only were megalodons the largest predators to have ever lived, but they also grew some of the most deadly teeth of any creature. They're the one part of these giant sharks that preserve well, and some specimens have been found that are more than seven and a half inches long. This makes the three-inch great white shark teeth seem tiny in comparison and suggests that a megalodon's jaw could have been up to seven feet across, meaning they could have eaten you sideways if they wanted. While many fossils are quite rare to find, megalodon teeth are actually quite common. Each individual would have grown thousands during their lifetimes and shed them in a similar way to how modern-day sharks do. In fact, at any one time, they had 276 teeth across five rows, so each one could be replaced in a matter of days if it was damaged. This means they're often found on beaches and in fossil deposits around the world and it only takes a quick search online to find a place where you can buy one for yourself. As anyone who has held one in their hand will know, it soon becomes obvious that when they're in the mouth of a mega shark, that the teeth would have had serrated edges and were incredibly sharp. This would have enabled Megalodon to easily bite chunks of flesh out of even the largest of prey. So even if they couldn't eat them in one go, they could cause enough damage that all they'd have to do is follow their victim until it was too weak to put up much of a fight. Number 13, the name. Well, you might think that the name of the largest shark to ever live was simply the Megalodon. This is actually only half of it. It's become synonymous with the giant fish in popular culture because it's easier to use instead of the full scientific name, and in itself is a good description of the animal that it represents, as it translates to mean giant tooth. There is debate as to what its full name should be, however, because scientific names are made up of the genus first, and then the species name. Scientists are, however, divided as to whether the mega shark belonged to the extinct genus Carcharocles or the genus Carcharodon, which has one living member, the great white. Most believe it should be classified in its own genus, though, which would mean its full name is Carcharocles megalodon. But even this is slightly confusing. There's a species of fossil bivalves that lived during the late Jurassic period, and their genus name is megalodon. Of course, if you were to ever see both creatures in real life, there'd be no mistaking which one is dangerous. Number 12, relation to modern day sharks. Megalodons were ferocious creatures unlike anything else that lived on Earth, but that doesn't mean that they have no relation to species that are alive today. After all, they're all sharks. Quite how closely related they are is still unclear, however. While there are more definite similarities, scientists still tend to classify the megalodon in a genus of its own. The species they were closest to was undoubtedly the great white shark. They both have large mouths that are packed full of triangular sharp teeth, and they both prey on large marine animals. For a long time, it was thought that the megalodon was in fact a direct ancestor of the great white, but studies have now cast doubt over that. Well, the most compelling evidence came from comparing fossilized shark teeth with their modern day equivalents, and the megalodon teeth were found to be much sharper and more serrated than those of the great white. An ancient species of mako shark that lived around six and a half million years ago, however, had teeth that looked much smaller to a great white's and it's now believed that the current apex predator of the seas is a descendant of a species of mako, as opposed to the megalodon. Number 11, the development of modern geology. It may come as a surprise to know, but the scientific study of geology wouldn't be what it is today without the megalodon. On the island of Malta in the Mediterranean Sea, people have collected megalodon teeth from the beaches for centuries. And this was a time before any knowledge of prehistoric creatures, so they had no concept that what they were collecting were the teeth of an ancient creature. 
Instead, they called them glossopetrae, which means tongue stones, and even Pliny the Elder wrote about them, suggesting that they fell to the ground during an eclipse. There were other legends, such as that they were the result of St. Paul casting a curse on the island serpents. It was only in 1666 when a physician from Florence was given a shark's head to dissect. He immediately noticed how similar its teeth were to the glossopetrae and started wondering how it was possible for them to become so embedded within rock. This led to the first theories about rock formations and how they're made up of layer upon layer, something that was so important to the field of research that he's still referred to as the father of stratigraphy. Number 10. Powerful Bite Not only was the megalodon the largest shark and predator to ever live, and was equipped with some of the largest and sharpest teeth ever, but the species is also thought to have had an incredibly strong bite, even more so than that of a T-Rex. To test how powerful the shark's bite force would have been, a research group was set up, and a computer model was created with everything that's known about the megalodon. They inputted the jaw size and the tooth size, and used information that we know of animals today, such as the fact that a great white shark can bite down with a force of 4,000 pounds. When they ran the numbers, the resulting prediction was that the megalodon's bite force was somewhere in the region between 24,000 and 40,000 pounds, which would be enough to chew through a small car. This would make it the most powerful bite of any creature in history to have been studied in this way, and eclipses the measly 8,000 pounds of force that a T-Rex is believed to have had. Number 9. Diet with such sharp teeth and an incredibly powerful bite, there was very little in the ocean that Megalodon wouldn't have been able to feed on. There's no doubt that they would have been able to crush through protective shells of giant turtles and other crustaceans. But without having a fossilized Megalodon stomach to study, it's almost impossible to know what their diet consisted of for certain. There is, however, another way to infer what they enjoyed eating, and that's by studying the fossils of other animals. In 2017, a research paper was published that had looked at the remains of several large filter-feeding whales that had been found in Peru, and their bones were covered in scars that perfectly matched the size and serrations of megalodon teeth. The region at the time would have been full of small baleen whales that grew up to 16 feet long, and they wouldn't have stood a chance against a megalodon. It seems as if the giant sharks tore through pods of these whales, and there is some evidence to suggest that they were particularly well adapted to hunting these species. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. When they lived It's easy to think that such a large and dangerous creature probably lived tens of millions of years ago at the same time of the dinosaurs. But unfortunately, there never have been an epic battle between a megalodon and a T-Rex because they both lived at very different times to each other. Amazingly, megalodons were the apex predators of the oceans for around 20 million years, and they only died out around 2.6 million years ago during the Pliocene era. This means they were alive much closer to the current time period than any species of dinosaur, and is why there are so many species that are still alive that bear a marked resemblance to them. Quite what they evolved from is not clear though, and it's unlikely due to a warming climate the availability of so much food enabled a smaller species to slowly adapt and become the megalodon that we're so familiar with. It's a testament to their ruthless design and overwhelming power that they were able to remain at the top of the food chain for such a long period of time, which is an accomplishment very few other species can lay claim to. Number 7. Hunting Technique Without any living megalodon to study, it can be difficult to know for certain how they hunted their prey. But based on fossil evidence and learning about how today's sharks behave, researchers have determined a series of frighteningly effective behaviors that Megalodon used to incapacitate and devour their food. The first, of course, was by utilizing their powerful bite and teeth. They wouldn't have feared many other creatures in the ocean and likely saw most things as potential prey. For those that were too big, the Megalodon would have taken as large a bite as they could into their flesh. This wouldn't have necessarily killed their target immediately, but they'd follow them for as long as it took for their victim to weaken to the point where it couldn't resist the attack any longer and the Meg could have simply eaten it alive. For those that were small enough, the Meg would have taken one bite and swallowed them whole in an instant. There's evidence, too, that the monstrous sharks had teeth that were particularly suited to biting through cartilage, so instead of targeting soft tissue as a great white does, they would have also begun an attack by tearing through their prey's fins, which would have left them unable to swim away so the Megalodon could go in for the kill. Essentially, they were so powerful that they had a range of options as how to consume their food. And unless a fish was either too quick or too strong for a megalodon to strike, there was no stopping them. Number 6. Habitat The climate of the world when megalodon was alive was very different than it is today, and it was a lot warmer. 
This meant that surprisingly, the giant sharks weren't restricted to certain regions of the world. They were found in the waters across the planet. Fossils have been found on every continent apart from Antarctica, and it's believed to have been able to happily live in waters that were between 34 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. It also seems like there was nowhere they weren't willing to go. Megalodon remains have been found in shallow coastal regions, coastal lagoons in the deep depths of the open ocean, and would have moved between different areas depending on the stage of their life cycle, and of course depending on where the best food sources were. Interestingly, fossils suggest that the megalodon that lived in the southern hemisphere tended to grow larger than those that lived in the north. It is not entirely clear why this might be. It's thought to be related to the distribution of food sources, and potentially the presence of other large predators in the southern hemisphere that required them to grow slightly larger to be able to fend off competition for prey. Number 5. Competitors Even though the megalodon were the largest predators of their time and in history, this doesn't mean that they were the only terrifying monsters in the water. They existed during a period where there was plenty of food available, so there were countless other deadly creatures that they had to compete with for food. These include somewhere between an estimated 10 to 60 other species of megatooth sharks, such as the Trubitensis, that had 5-inch teeth and grew to more than 20 feet long. If they had been alive today, they'd certainly be contenders for the deadliest sharks, but in comparison to the megalodon, they wouldn't have been much of a match. Surprisingly, though, the biggest competition to the megalodon was probably a giant species of carnivorous sperm whale, the Leviathan melville, named after the author of Moby Dick, grew up to 60 feet long like the sperm whales do today, but this one had rows of huge, sharp teeth, some of which were 5 inches wide and 14 inches long. The first fossils of this species date back to around 12 million years ago, and they had been found in some of the same fossil deposits as megalodon teeth. It's therefore more than likely that the two animals would have faced off against each other and competed for the same prey. And the Melville was probably the only other creature in the ocean that the megalodon would have been cautious around. Number 4. Megalodon Nurseries There are lots of animals that are left to fend for themselves as soon as they're born. And this is the case for most shark species, but not all of them. Some, like great whites and hammerheads, will only give birth to their young in safe, shallow waters where predators are far less likely to attack. And these places are referred to by biologists as nurseries. Often, the young sharks will stay in these protected areas for many months or even years before venturing out into the open ocean. But this isn't a new behavior for sharks, because there's evidence to suggest that megalodon used to do it too. The evidence for this comes from a fossil site in Panama, where unusually large concentration of small megalodon teeth have been found. Most of them appear to have come from individuals that were between 7 and 35 feet long which would certainly suggest this was a safe place where they remained as they were growing up. There's another site in the Bone Valley region of Florida that seems to have been used in the same way, and this was vital for the continuation of the species. While Megalodon would have had nothing to fear when they were fully grown, there were plenty of predators that would have made quick work of the juvenile ones. This would have drastically reduced the chances of individuals reaching adulthood and prevented the species from being so dominant, so giving birth in nurseries was the perfect solution. Number 3. Extinction Based on the fossil record, it appears as if Megalodon went extinct at some point around 2.6 million years ago. And there are a few things that happened around that time that likely combined to make it more and more difficult for them to survive. The first was climate change. Instead of the Earth continually warming, the planet was in a phase where temperatures were gradually falling. And although this was happening at a slow rate, it began to have a dramatic effect on the marine environment. Undersea currents began to change, which affected where nutrient-rich waters could be found, and increasing amounts of water began to freeze at the ice caps, which resulted in the lowering of sea levels, which blocked off access routes and possibly drained the bays that were being used as nurseries. Other animals, too, began to die off because of the lack of food sources, and it's likely that baleen whales, which were one of the main components of a megalodon's diet, began to die out, and this would have put huge pressure on megalodons to search for new sources of food. When large-scale changes like these begin to occur, it's often the biggest animals that die off first. They are the ones that need the most food to survive and are less able to adapt to environmental changes. With a restricting region of water that they could swim in because of falling temperatures and a greatly reduced food supply, there was simply no way they could have continued existing in the numbers that they had been, and they began to die out. Couple this with the fact that their nurseries were probably no longer available, which would have dramatically changed their ability to breed and the megalodons found themselves to be an antiquated species in a changing world. Extinction followed soon after, and their place at the top of the food chain was taken by smaller species of sharks that didn't need to eat so much and were more tolerant of the lower temperatures. Number 2. Their Poop Very few remains apart from teeth have ever been found of a megalodon. 
In one instance, a partial spinal column was discovered that allowed researchers to determine some aspects of their size and structure, but apart from that, there are hardly any clues about the lifestyles of these giant beasts. Quite often, large numbers of fossilized teeth will be found in the same location as each other, either because the place was used as a nursery, it was a site where a larger number of them died, or because currents washed small pieces into the same region. Sometimes, things are found alongside them that could well be associated with the huge sharks themselves. That's what happened during a dig at a site in South Carolina, where hundreds of megalodon teeth were found. Next to them, though, was something incredibly rare, a five and a half inch long lump of fossilized poop that was identified as having come from a large-bodied shark. As it was found alongside so many remnants of megalodon, it makes sense that this is also from the mega sharks as well. The most peculiar thing about it is that it was spiral-shaped, but this isn't unheard of in the feces of sharks. In fact, the same thing happens with the waste products of great white sharks, and they take on this shape because their lower intestines are twisted around like a corkscrew. While this might sound painful, it's actually a clever adaptation for animals living underwater and helps their bodies expel all the fecal material as efficiently as possible, especially when it may contain hard bone particles. Number 1. Are they alive today? Ever since people first realized the size and ferocity of Megalodon, the question has been asked of the chances that they're still alive today. While the last fossilized specimen to have been discovered dates back to 2.6 million years ago, this isn't proof in itself that the species died out, so could it be possible if they've been hidden away since then? While it may be a fun or terrifying prospect to think about, the chances are that there's still a living megalodon on Earth is extremely remote. There would surely have been teeth found just like there are with any other shark species, and you would expect the remains of prey to have floated to the surface too. Megalodon preferred warmer waters than are found at the poles or deep in the oceans, so it's very unlikely that they've been hiding in such remote places for so long. And they're such large creatures that they would have been continually eating, and simply aren't enough deep-sea creatures to appease such an appetite. The final piece of evidence to support the fact that the Megalodon did truly become extinct is our presence and behavior on Earth. We are so active on the oceans and throw so much trash in that it'd be impossible for such a large animal to stay in a confined space and it would either be forced to move or have no choice but to take its chances to try to hunt us. The simple fact that it hasn't happened a single time is enough proof. They were such a highly aggressive species that there's no reason why they would decide to avoid human contact at all costs. Watch our Animals playlist for more Top 15 videos about animals. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best animal-related videos.